God laid this this sermon. I I was going a different direction. And uh, the Lord laid this sermon on my heart. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to preach on it. But I want to give you a word, a fresh word, a rhema word from the Lord that I really believe that God dropped down in my spirit. That uh, I titled this, this sermon, Lessons from the Life of Jabez. Lessons from the Life of Jabez. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn to 1 Chronicles. This man named Jabez is only in two verses in all the Bible. Out of 31,173 verses in the Bible, he's in two of those verses. He's not talked about a lot, but he he has a profound prophetic prayer. And I believe that Elkhorn is in in a profound prophetic season. I know a lot of people don't believe in the prophetic word of God, but if you don't, shame on you. Because it's in the Word. It's it's backed up by the authority of God. Prophecy is still alive today. It really is. It's It's a prophetic. It's a gift from the Lord. And it's to build up and to encourage and and to set apart God's people for such a time as this. And that's why you always see, you'll hear me say, I want you to raise your hands and receive this blessing. Because I believe that, that you've got to want it, you've got to desire it, you've got to for, hunger for it, and, and you've got you to want that stuff. That's why I preach the way I do is because it took me a long time. It took me a long time to quit being religious. It took me a long time to get out of the church mode. It, there's nothing wrong. With, here's the deal. This is not the church. Building is not the church. I am the church. And this word, this holy word of God is written For me to live by my instruction manual. That's why we can't leave nothing out. Hallelujah. We can't leave not a word. Not not, not every T that's crossed. We can't leave it out. You can't leave the I's that are dotted. You can't leave it out. You can't leave out one verse. Because it's the canon of the Bible. People say, well, that's Old Testament. Well, it's a testament. It's a testament. So today I want to give you a word that God is stirring in my spirit. And and I don't know how long we're going to go. But we're going to go until God says be quiet. All right, y'all good with that? Amen. How many of you know you're not here by an accident or a coincidence? Everybody, are y'all, have y'all grown that much that you realize that it's not by an accident or a coincidence that you're here today? God profoundly woke you up this morning, hallelujah, and put you in a church that believes in the anointing of God. Somebody give him a praise. It's not an accident that you're here today. God's got you here for a reason. It's not, it's not a coincidence that you're here. God gave you ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And if you would do that, everybody in this house today will walk out those doors. You'll walk out blessed, highly favored. The anointing of God will rest upon you. So praise God. I I truly believe one thing I have noticed over the years, that a true man of God and a true woman of God truly seeks more of Him. More, More of Him. Guys, watch this. It gets better than what would happen this morning. If, if we figured it out, we've done a lot. There's no way. God wants to give us more. How many of y'all can at least say God wants to give me more? You've not figured it out. God wants to give the church more and more, more power, more anointing, more favor, more manna from heaven. God wants to give you more. He really does. And you've got to believe that stuff. So I really believe God put something in us called the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. Now I'm just now learning a little bit about that. It took me a long time to try to rest in that. Because I thought, I said, well man, people who raised their hands, I'll never forget in 1999 I went to a thing called Hearts on Fire. And I remember being there in 1999 and I, I looked across the road and there was a man raising his hand. And holy tears of God was running down his face and I didn't know what to, I, I didn't know what to think about that. Now, I know you're in a church now that if, if you raise your hands, it's good. How many of you know we think that people getting saved every Sunday is normal? Jim, I never thought I'd be in a church like that. That it's normal that 22 people get baptized on one Sunday night. It's normal that six people walk up front, hallelujah, and give their heart to Jesus Christ. It's normal to see blinded eyes. Somebody help me preach. It has blinded eyes come open. It's normal that lame legs walk, Hallelujah. That's God. And that's the kind of God we serve and we believe here at this church. We believe. It's normal, Jimmy. It is normal for all this to happen. God wants to give you 5,000 souls in one day, not six. 
Hallelujah. So I want to ask you a question. Are you hungry for God this morning? Are you really hungry for the anointing? I want to read you two scriptures, two little verses out of 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. Lord, help me preach this word today. 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. This sermon I dedicate to Elkhorn. I preach this sermon for you. God just keeps touching. I feel He's so sweet right now. The Spirit is so rich in this house. I don't want us to miss it. I don't want us to miss what God is doing. Verse 9, 1 Chronicles chapter 4. He says these words Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, listen to this, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to God of Israel, listen to this, and I want you to highlight, I want you to underline, I want you to circle, I want you to mess your Bible up on these, this verse right here, verse 10. Y'all ready? Listen to this. He said these words, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm. So that, listen to this, I will be free from pain. Free from pain. And listen to this, and God granted his request. Did they get in y'all spirit? I want y'all to listen. We're going to have to learn how to pray. And this is what God's teaching me. I want to give you some things. Jabez means pain. Everybody turn to David and say, Jabez means pain. He also means sorrow. Yeah. But the Bible says, through his pain and through his sorrow, he was still honorable. The Lord spoke into my heart this week, and I wrote this down. If we want God to bless us, and I think everybody wants a blessing from the Lord. God says the first thing we must be is honorable, trustworthy, loyal, and dependable, upright. And every word, let our yeses be yes and our noes be no. If you want the God to bless you, even if you're going through a pain, even through a sorrow of your life, God says if you will be honorable, I'll bless you. I'll bless you. The second thing God spoke into my heart was, was this. This is not your points, but it's some things God, I guess, uh, I'm going to front the service a little bit with this old Pentecostal word. But it's true. He was from the tribe of Judah. Judah in the Hebrew language means praiser. Y'all getting this now. It, it means praiser. And what God spoke unto me into my heart was, it says, if you want God to bless you and you be honorable, you've got to learn how to praise him. Now, I'm not talking about on a Sunday morning that you just come in and raise one hand or whatever. You can praise God. Listen, if you can't praise Him in the closet on a Monday, you'll never come out on a Sunday. You've got to learn to praise Him in the midst of your pain. God spoke this word into my spirit. He says, you know what? Even in sorrow, even in pain, He can still praise His King. And what God spoke into my heart was, I'm going to give you these words because, man, this is some words that God's given me. Could you imagine, in the Hebrew, they didn't call him Jabez. In the Hebrew language, Sarah, what they called him was by his Hebrew name, the meaning of his Hebrew name. Jabez meant pain. It meant sorrow. So could you imagine Jabez walking down the street and they say, hey, here comes pain. Hey, here comes sorrow. Even his own mama said he was a pain. I mean, y'all heard it. <laughs> and my mama called me that too. But what God keeps telling me is this, that even through the word of pain, even through sorrow, he, if you notice, he said, Lord, one thing I want you to do is bless me. I want you to keep your hand upon me. I don't want you to leave me, God. Because, Lord, I can't make it. If God were to move his hand, well, this is a prophetic word. If God were to move his hand off your life, off this church, off your children, you'd be DOA. You'd be dead on arrival. If God were to move his holy hand off God, off your life, you're a dead man. You're a dead woman. It's the truth. We need the hand of the Lord upon this church. We need, you need the hand of the Lord upon your children. You need God more today than ever before. Somebody praise Him. You just start praising Him. I'm telling you, 
There's something about, listen, listen, listen. I'm glad I got a church that God has placed me in that loves to praise the Lord. I'm glad I don't go to the first church of Frigidaire. I'm glad that when we walk into this house, that we'll lift holy hands. We'll dance in the spirit. We'll raise our hands to God. I praise the Lord that we ain't got too many popsicles and mom sickles and baby sickles in the house. I ain't going to never turn back. I'm glad I'm blessed. I'm glad y'all helped me preach. I'm glad God's in this house. This ain't no ordinary house. You say, Brian, you just, you just like people to clap. Don't clap. Go ahead and be a fridge there. Go ahead and sit there. But I promise you, when the anointing of God starts filling the house, you'll stand to your feet and say, Blessed be the name of God. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. You can't help it. Because if you've got God in you, that spirit's like dynamite. Somebody needs to take a lighter and light your wick. I'm not telling you to get up and stand up and do it, but you do what God tells you to do. I'm glad I'm in a house that loves to praise God. Matter of fact, we're just going to praise him. I don't care if y'all like it or not. We're just going to praise him. He's worthy to be praised. He got us here today. Let's just praise him. Let's just praise him like it's our last praise service. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yeah, we're we going to praise his name. How many of you are glad you're not dead in this house? Amen. How many of you are glad God got you out of the wilderness? Amen. Woo. Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord. Keep that holy fire burning. Keep burning us, Lord. So I don't know what's going to happen in these sermons. But it's going to be good. It's going to, one thing you will learn is that if you're, if you're in a pain or if you've got sorrow going in your life, you'll learn two things. I've got to pray and I've got to praise. I got to pray and I got to praise. One thing that I know is that when hell is coming against me, family's coming against me, the world's coming against me, hallelujah, God be for me. It don't matter who's against me. I've learned to pray and praise. I've learned to pray and praise. Number one, I'm going to give you two lessons today. I split this in half because I know I'm long winded. Don't y'all say amen. amen. <laughs> two lessons from the from the life of Jabez. Number one, he said, bless me. Y'all listen to me. This is preacher. Listen to me. Say, I got you. Because I, I, want, I want just to get in your spirit. Just to answer all y'all's questions right now. Chris, do you think you are des- that you deserve to be blessed? Say, that's the wrong answer. Listen to me. That's, listen, listen. I know this is going to be a new word for, some, for a lot of people. See, we think we deserve to die and go to hell. God didn't. God don't, Bob. God says, it's worth my son dying for you. You, If God will send his only begotten son to a cross, don't you think God, hallelujah, wants to bless you? Elkhorn! Now I'm going to ask you, Dixie. I'm going to ask y'all, do y'all say Yes. I gave you the answer. You better say yes. yes. <laughs> Dixie, do you deserve God to bless you? How hard is that for you to say? That's why the church is not being blessed, Greg. We can't even say God bless me. This is, oh, this is what God just gave me. Now listen to this. God won't bless a wrong prayer. Golly, it's so good. God won't bless a wrong prayer. So evidently, God said, I'll grant what you ask for. So how come the church is not saying, God, bless me. Bless my family. Bless my children. Bless me, God. Hallelujah. See, if you can say, God, I, I, I bless me. Now, I know it's hard we live in Kentucky. But we don't want to say, God, bless me. People don't even want to say, I'm blessed. That's why all the time people say, how you doing? I'm blessed. How are you doing? Well... You got an hour, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm telling you. I deal with that. So listen, you'll never be blessed. Write this down. You'll never be blessed until you think you're worthy to be blessed. 
You'll never be blessed. Elkhorn, you will never grow God's kingdom. You say, well, Brian, we got over 500 people here today. That's growing. God wants more. I'll never settle for 500. I'll never settle for 1,000. We ain't even got a half a percent of Camelsville. That man, Alan Witham, came to our leadership meeting. He says, every 10 houses you pass, eight of them don't go to church. I'll never be satisfied with 500. I'll never be satisfied. You say, you're greedy. No, bless me, Lord. Lord, bless me. Bless me. Can y'all say that? Because if you can say that, you're heading the right direction. But if you're sitting there going, no. Nah. Man, I got in trouble last night. I did stuff I shouldn't do. You think you really shocked God? Do you think you really shocked God? Do you think God really didn't know what's on your mind right now? And that's scary. Bless me, oh Lord, indeed, bless me. So watch this. I want everybody to hold your hands up. Looks like this. Come on. We're going to have an interactive service this morning. Y'all ready? I want y'all to quote this. Bless me, bless me. Indeed. indeed, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Come on. Bless me, bless me. Indeed. indeed, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Now say, grant that, Lord. Y'all in trouble. Here's what else God gave me. Willie, come here. And this is not by an accident. This is what God spoke to me. I want, you, I want to show you something. Call who up? Willie Bland Ford. This is what God said. He said, I want you to call Willie Bland. Because I sat there and said, who, who can I call Ford? And God said, call Willie Bland. I wrote it right there. Does it say that? Yes, sir. Okay. So this, I, didn't tell you, I didn't go to my office this morning and say, oh, God, give me a name. I studied. Willie, this is, well, I, you know what? Take, if you want this, you can have, uh-oh. Man, hey, y'all watch it. Y'all think that's an accident? I think that stuff's leaping at him. See, we look at things totally different. We say, golly, I dropped it. No, God's wanting to give him something. God's wanting to bless you. Y'all hear this preacher this morning? God wants to bless you. I don't care what any old stinking preacher's ever got in front of you and ever said, God's nature is to bless people. I don't care what any old preacher said. You want it? You sure you want this? You don't know what's in it. You want it? Okay, open it up. Open it up. See, here's the deal. I mean, this is like Christmas, dude. Hurry up. You know, like, you know, people get the knives out and cut the tape and like they're going to salvage the paper. I guess they do. I don't know. All right, what was in there? Yeah, I know it's not 100. People say, oh, my God. <laughs> See, you miss your blessing. It's not about how much is in there. It's that you're getting blessed in there. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's yours. That's yours. Now, go to McDonald's because, you know what I'm saying? But here's the deal. I've done that at other churches, and they say, no, man. Go ahead. I don't, I don't, I'm good, man. Don't do that. God wants, listen, he would not have got that unless you what? Reached out for it. You got to receive it. Most churches are not receiving the blessings from the Lord. Do y'all see what God is doing in this atmosphere right now? You say, Brian, you don't know what I'm going through. Hey, 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 you don't know what God went through. But here, you can have the envelope. It's, it's anointed too. Love you. Thank you. It's blessings. It's blessings. I look for the day, and I'm going to say this. I look for the day that Elkhorn Baptist Church can give away a vehicle. Another one. We already gave away one. Another one. I look for the day. That we can build houses, hallelujah, and give it to people in need. Because that's the church. We got to bless and bless and bless. My daddy died a year and a half ago. And I went over to my mom's house yesterday. And mom was tore up. How many of you know when you see your mama cry? Something about it. And my mom was sitting around the table. Dana can testify to this. And this is going on the radio, so mama, I love you. And she's sitting around the table, 
And Daddy done all the work of the house. He, he, he done the garage work. He's he cleaned. He done the gutter work. He done it all. Do you know what I'm talking about? And Mama was sitting around that table yesterday. She said, Brian, I got to tell you something. So what? She said, she said, my church, Campbellsville Baptist Temple, the men of the church are coming over to my house. And they're wanting to do my yard. They're wanting to do my landscaping. They're wanting to fix my garage door. They're wanting to do it all. The church. God set the church up to be a blessing. Howard Durham, you are a blessing from the Lord. Hallelujah. My God, I feel this this morning. Some of you are sitting there going, ah, you just don't know. Oh, bless me indeed, oh Lord, grant it. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. I received that. And here's what my mom did. I finally got to spank my mama. Mama was at the table. And she said, I can't do it. I can't receive it. I said, Mom, you've got pride in your life. You've got pride in your life. And that's my mama. And Melinda looked over and said, Mama, see what you raised? I feel something shifting right now in this church. People are wanting to bless you. And you say, no, 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 no. I can't do it. You've got to receive it. He'd have never known what was in that envelope. Until you reached out and grabbed it, opened it up, and said, oh, my God, $10. Now, a greedy person would sit there and go, well, here, man, it's only 10 But to you, I'm going to ask you something. I've got to ask you this. Because here's how I got, I, I've got to know. Why did God give me your name? I know it's those $10. It, will that help you in any way? Yes, sir. So you receive that? So did God connect with you when you opened an envelope and you seen only this ten dollars? Some people says only ten, but it, you received that, right? So that spoke to you, that humbled you, right? Thank you. I got to know this stuff. See, when God speaks, I got to know what He's saying. I got to know what He's talking about. Bless me. Bless me. See, God wants to bless you so you can do more. So many people are sitting on their blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. I'm sitting in my recliner, watching MTV. I don't know what I'm singing, but I'm going to preach. You know, what? Y'all are laughing because you know it's true. You're like, dude, what he see in his vision? What's up? I had a remote control in my hand last night watching, you know. All I'm telling you, God wants to bless you so you can be a blessing to somebody else. If you are a hoarder, and if Elkhorn Baptist Church hoards money, God will not bless this church. That means clap. That means I don't know. If we were to be raptured out and we have $100,000 in the bank, boy, that's going to bless somebody. I told the Lord, I, I just want to be a blessing. It scares Dana because I look for people to bless. I do. I look. There was a little boy up there in Lebanon at, at the Mighty Dollar. I guess the Mighty Dollar. They got one. It's a dollar store. I've seen that. <laughs> and this little boy said, Mama, I just want it. It was an airplane. And his mama, she started looking through her purse. I don't have a lot of money, but I got a dollar. I had $11. <laughs> but anyway, this little boy said, Mama, I want this airplane. And he was throwing a fit. And she's like, shut up, I'll beat you. I said, I say in the name of Jesus. That's the only way you can beat him. <laughs> and there I was, me and Dana was there. And the little boy said, please, Mama. Y'all know how they do. That means, that's what it means. She should have whipped him first, then blessed him. <laughs> and this little boy, his mom was looking through her purse, and she couldn't find a dollar. 
And the Lord said, you buy that airplane for him. And I'm just sitting there going, Lord, um, what if his mama says no? What, no then, but you ask the mama first. See, God's a God of order. He's a God of order. See, if his mama said no, I couldn't have blessed him. Same way with Jesus. But I said, ma'am, can I buy that for, her, for him? And she's sitting there going, sir, you don't have to do I want to buy the airplane. <laughs> the airplane. And all of a sudden, she said, I guess. And so I gave him a dollar. Actually, I gave him two dollars. I said, keep the change. I felt like a millionaire. <laughs> keep the change, son. <laughs> keep the change, you know. Just blessed. Just blessed. Bless me indeed, O oh Lord. Bless me. The second thing I want to give you guys, and I'm done, is enlarge my territory. Bless me. And the second part of his prayer is scary, but it's true, and I'm going to preach. Enlarge my territory. The Hebrew word for enlarge, I mean, for, yeah, for enlarge means to bring abundance. See, yeah, and here I say, man, if I give to the Lord, he's going to give me a million dollars. I did not say that. He said he'd bless you. He didn't say, y'all watch this. Y'all know when you get up and see them TV programs, call, call Israel and get the holy water? I get double dog. It is not, I, I'm telling you. Just run some sink water and you got water. Yeah, and I know some of y'all look at me like, oh my God. Listen, it does not take water to bless me. I'm already blessed. Watch this. I'm glad y'all love me and lay hands upon me and anoint me with oil. And I receive that. But watch this. I'm blessed with it or without it. I'm a blessed man of God. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. I see people, man, I'm telling you, send in thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to buy holy water. Have y'all, I hope y'all haven't done that. I know I'm going to get some emails this week, but it's all right. Here's what it says. Enlarge means this. God, bring me abundance. Lord, increase me. Bring me up. Multiply me. Make greater things in me. Extend my dimensions. Extend my dimensions. I'm so fired up for Elkhorn Baptist Church. I know y'all may not be, but I'm fired up for y'all. This is y'all's sermon. I wrote this down. And I want y'all to write this down if you've got notes, if you're taking notes. My willingness, my willingness plus God's power <laughs> equals my expanded territory. My willingness plus God's power equals my expanded territory. Elkhorn, either we can kick back and say everything's good. We're scared. We're not going to move forward. And you say, Brian, not everybody's got faith like you. You've got to measure. And God says, if you, hey, he granted, two verses in the Bible. A man named Jabez means pain and sorrow. But if they forgot, he could pray and he was a praiser. If we keep praying and if we keep praising, God will bring us the territory. There's a harvest and God wants to give it to us. Y'all better receive this stuff today. I felt a, a nudging of the Spirit this week says, you write this down, there's more. There's more. That's all I wrote. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. Everybody say, there's more. there's more. Yeah. See, there's more souls to be saved. There's more lives to be changed. There's more families to come together. There's more churches to be built. There's more missionaries to be sent out. There's more. We will not stop until we hear the horn. We can't. We can't, guys. We can't enlarge my territory. God wrote in the book of Revelation. He said, I have placed an open door. An open, open, open. Everybody say open door. In front of you that no man can close. Golly, Scott. Y'all receive this right here? God has placed an open door in front of you that no man can close. 
God has placed that an open door in front of you that no man can close. Does that resonate in your spirit? Does that get this white boy fired up on a Sunday morning? Bob, God has placed an open door in front of you and Mary that no man can close. Hallelujah. Elkhorn. God has placed an open door in front of us that no man can close. No man, no person, no body can close. You say, Brian, how do I get through it? you got to believe. you got to believe you're worthy to be blessed. you got to believe that that's y'all's dilemma. God spoke to me. That's the dilemma of the church. Well, as long as we got 500. And God's sitting there going, really? There was a man in the Bible, praise team, y'all come. There was a man in the Bible, I was told this Sunday night. His name was Zerubbabel. I know it's a messed up word. Name. I would call him Zerub. What's up, Zerub? You know. <laughs> you know, Zerub. But anyway... God gave him, listen to this, Jamie, a set of blueprints to build the wall. Listen to me. God gave Zerubbabel, Zerub, a set of blueprints to build a wall. And you know what he done? He started having some conflict, some problem, sorrow, and some pain in his life. And this man named Zerubbabel, he, went, he walked over to a trash can. He took the blueprints that God has given him and he threw them in the trash. Listen to me. And all of a sudden he left the blueprints that God has given him to build the wall in the trash can and he walked away. I just wonder under the influence of God how many people have took the spiritual blueprints that God has given them to build his church, to build his family, to build the ministry here in Campbellsville, Kentucky, to reach the lost and they threw them away. How many people are under my voice today? They're taking their marriage, their blueprints, hallelujah, that God has given their marriage, and they're saying it ain't worth it. It ain't worth the pain. It ain't worth the sorrow. And they throw them away. How many churches under my voice today that a month ago I drove by some churches having Sunday school, and the most cars I seen in the parking lot was 10. Well, something ain't right. Yeah, here's what's wrong. Here's what, here, let me preach the truth to y'all. They don't want it. They can fuss all they want to and have all the stinking business meetings they want to. But the bottom line, when they stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and they stand before the great I Am, that will not be in a good excuse. Elkhorn, I'm going to ask you, man of God, woman of God, youth, where's your blueprints at this morning? Where's your marriage at this morning? Where's Elkhorn at this morning? Where's this pastor at this morning? This is where the rubber meets the road. So many people know. They say, I know God loves me. I know God's got a plan for me. Not to hurt me or to harm me, but to prosper me. Oh, really? Does he, Courtney? He said, if you give, I'll put it together, shake it together, and it'll run over. Oh, glory to God, I feel that. God says, you give me 10%, I'll open, the, I'll open the windows, the windows of heaven, and pour out more blessings to you that your barns can't even hold it. My God. My God, my God, my God. My God. Hmm. So many people have the blueprint that God has wrote his love letter. Hallelujah. Well, that was good for them. Lord, bless me. Lord, I'm waiting. Where's God at? He's in me. And if God is in me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can walk on water, they'll put me in a lion's den. Hey, I can split the waters, 
You say, Brian, do it, do it, do it, do it. I ain't going to do it for you. But if God gives me the power, he'll back it up with his authority. You receive that? Bless me and enlarge my territory. Bless me and enlarge my territory. Bless me in the school system that God will give you souls. Bless you at the hospital. Enlarge my territory. Lord, don't let nobody pass me by. Lord, I pray you put an unction in my spirit that when they walk by me, I know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Enlarge my territory. Church, don't you back down. Yeah, of course, been to this spot at least twice. What's it going to take to go over? When we say, God... Bless me indeed, O oh Lord. Enlarge my territory, God. And when God starts doing that, you got to walk in that. you got to believe you're worthy to be blessed. We have to believe that your marriage is worthy to be blessed. That your children are worthy to be blessed. Y'all got this word today? Stand to your feet. Come on. I feel God shifting. Hallelujah. Whew, my God. Whew, so many times. Lord, bless me. Enlarge my territory. God, give me more opportunity to reach people. Bless me so I can bless others. Bless me so I can bless others. Don't let me be a hoarder. Bless me so I can bless others. Enlarge my territory, God. Give me opportunity to bless. And Lord, don't let me throw away my blueprint. I'll open this Bible. Help me, Lord. Let God minister to you. Listen. Romans chapter 8. Y'all ready? No. In all things, these things, we are more than conquerors. Through Him, through Him, who loves us. For I am convinced, I am persuaded. I'm not backing down. Hallelujah. I'm convinced, Jamie. I am persuaded, Amanda. My God. That neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, hallelujah, nor height or death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate me from the love of God. Blueprint. Blueprint. I'm going to ask you. We got people that didn't bring the blueprints. You can't build a house if you ain't got blueprints. It'd be the most unstable house you've ever seen in your life. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 that the winds will come, they will blow, and it will blow it down. If you ain't got a foundation... Built on the rock, hallelujah. Bless me, oh Lord, indeed. Bless me, bless me, bless me. I accept it, I receive it. Whatever you want, God, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. And don't let me throw away the blueprint. So, Father God, I spoke the word. May you save souls in this house today. God, may families realize how blessed we are in this house. Enlarge, 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 enlarge our territory. Give us opportunity to reach the lost. May Elkhorn Baptist Church go worldwide. May today the sermon to God reach a, reach a mama who's, who's going through some pain in her life or some sorrow in her life. May prayer and praise rise up in her. I pray this prayer believing. 
that God, you're doing something great in this house in Jesus' name. Guys, this sermon spoke to you. I am begging you under the unction of God. Under the unction of God. Under the unction of God. You need to run to this altar and you need to realize you are blessed. And you need to say, God, keep blessing me. Keep enlarging my territory. Come on. You say, Brian, I'm waiting. No. Watch this. Y'all ready? We're not waiting on God. God's waiting on us. We're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you. So come on, bless me. Enlarge my territory. I double dog dare you to pray that this morning. Bless me and enlarge me. Bless me and enlarge me.